Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's regions won't appear in the same order as the original. FF7 uh, Rebirth players will be revisiting regions found in the original Final Fantasy VII, but not necessarily in the same order. It is an exciting opportunity for Square Enix, the ending of FF7 Rebirth a remake has unburdened the development team of the canon of the original JRPG, leaving FF7 Rebirth to, uh, to explore in new directions. I wonder if that means that what they're saying is that there will be new places to visit in between the original places, but the original places are still in the same order. Or if it means that, oh, you're potentially going to visit the Golden Saucer before you get to Calm. That doesn't mean Square Enix won't play around with the existing canon, however. It's already confirmed that FF7 Rebirth will be revisiting many of the FF7 areas fans love. There's a catch, however, as those regions may not necessarily be revisited in the same order. Uh, depending on how they change the story, because the, the ordering of the locations was somewhat story dependent. Like, it didn't make any sense to visit the Golden Saucer before Coral, because you needed Coral to get the backstory of Barrett, and then the Golden Saucer being dropped into the desert prison was where the resolution of that conflict was. So doing that in reverse order might not make sense. Uh, the opening act of Final Fantasy VII takes place entirely in the city of Midgar, and fittingly, so does FF7 Remake. Once players leave Midgar, an incredibly incredible world opens up to them. FF7 players will likely fondly recall visiting Calm, the Golden Saucer, Cosmo Canyon, Nibelheim, the City of the Ancients, and other key areas. FF7 Rebirth doesn't have to revisit these areas, but it plans to nevertheless. Square Enix has confirmed that no locations are going to be cut from the new game. What that means is that all the original areas in FF7 Original will still be in the new game. Uh, however, there will be new areas, of course. And then the old areas won't be visited in the same order. Right, and that probably makes more sense towards, I think, after... Um, probably after Rocket Town. Because everything up until Rocket Town had to be visited in that order for specific story reasons. While no FF7 areas will be cut from FF7 Rebirth, Square Enix will still be flexing its creative to, uh, creativity in the new game. The areas that players will be visiting in FF7 Rebirth won't be in the same order as the original game. The story will obviously be dr a dramatic departure as a result. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge to make an open world game have a linear type of story. And very few games are able to do this correctly. There will also be an opportunity to see these locations and those who live in them in a new way. That is true. Because, remember that there's stuff with Jesse and the Golden Saucer that was not ever touched upon in the original game. Creative director Tetsuya Nomura himself confirmed these details. FF7 Rebirth may be the focus of this conversation, but it should also include the unnamed third game plan for the remake of FF7. Not every area may be found in FF7 Rebirth after all. Some may be in the third Final Fantasy VII game, that's true. All that Nomura has confirmed, clarified, is that nothing will be cut or shortened, like with FF7 Remake's journey through Midgar. The experience will be expanded, if anything. This is a new opportunity to explore the story and the themes of FF7, and Square Enix is very clearly planning to do so. There's plenty of mystery found in Nomura's comments about FF7 Rebirth and its structure. That FF7 Rebirth will revisit the areas players remember, but not in the same order, feels right in the direction the new games are taking. It maintains that nostalgia... FF7 fans crave for, well, the older ones at least, while keeping things fresh and new, players can find out exactly what Nomura means when uh, FF7 Rebirth arrives. What that probably means is that the, the events that happen in the main game, they don't necessarily have to happen in the same places. The Barrett and the Dine backstory that happened at the Golden Saucer in the, the desert prison, but nothing says that it has to. It could be that Dine and Barrett's backstory continues to expand somewhere different than the Golden Saucer, and then therefore, the Golden Saucer can now be visited before even Coral. Uh, FF7 Rebirth and its sequel won't be a sped up version of the original. On July 7th, several outlets published a new interview with the core staff of FF7 Rebirth and Crisis Core FF7 Reunion. Uh, Gitase explained that FF7 Rebirth has a considerable amount of content that will not heavily deviate from the original game, nor destroy the original game's image. It seems like they're they're running into this very odd dilemma where okay don't worry it's the, it's the same as the original but it's like vastly different what does that mean exactly does that mean that the the plot ghosts are going to make a return I hope not I hope that the plot ghosts have more or less been finished with at least at least 
so far, like they were used to set up everything, but now we've taken a radical departure. We don't need them anymore. We have them as the backstory, the context. Uh, the game does not heavily deviate from the original and you will procure you the same feeling as the original. The Midgard, I always assumed what that meant was that the, um, the story experience will be the same. The emotional experience of playing the game will be the same, but the story beats and the actual events of the, the game will be different. Uh, the Midgard we made in FF7 Remake was a result of trying to make it satisfying for the fans of the original in the same way FF7 Rebirth would not break the image of the original so dear to fans. So to that end, it's quite a massive game. Nomura also mentioned FF7 Rebirth and its sequel will not be sped up versions of the original game. Well, Remake was not a sped up version of the original game, so I'm not sure why you would assume that Rebirth will be the sped up version of the original game either. Moreover, Rebirth will have the same feeling of freedom you had in the original game far after leaving Midgar. Yes, it gave you a lot of freedom, but it was linear freedom. It's not like at the beginning of the game you can go straight to Junon, or you can go straight to the, the Cosmo Canyon or the City of the Ancients. Like. It's open, but then clearly there are like barriers. You don't have the Bronco or a Golden Chocobo initially. So it's still guided, even though it's open. Some of you are worried, wondering if three games will be enough or if it'll be like a sped up version of the game, it won't. So please don't worry about it. Needless to say, the same feeling of freedom you had after leaving Midgar in the original will be there. I believe you'll actually be surprised at how much we managed to include in the game. When compared to the original, Tetsuya Nomura answered that the story's mainframe, mainframe, remains unchanged and display, explained how they're avoiding cutting content overall. I don't think the issue, the issue was not that they had not enough content. I'm sorry, the, the issue wasn't, as far as what I perceived, wasn't that they had too much content. In fact, it's the opposite. In Remake, it's that I think they had too little content and that was pretty apparent by all the side quests that didn't really go anywhere. It's almost like the, the Midgard portion of the game, the five hours of the original, wasn't enough so they had to stretch it and there wasn't enough of the original to put in the new game of remake so they added a bunch of side quests that were very inconsequential now after you leave midgar however the world is very big so maybe they're running into this dilemma now that it seems like oh there's so much stuff how do we cram all this stuff into one game that's a weird that's a very weird lopsided issue to have the original seven the midgar portion was quite small but the open world portion of disc one and two were quite big so remake being a 45 hour game has to fit like all of midgar because they decided that's where it's going to end into one game so they had to stretch out a couple of things artificially with the side quests but now they have the opposite problem we have too much stuff from disc one to disc two that we're going to cram into rebirth that probably means that they've decided that Rebirth is going to end somewhere that's going to, at least the equivalent in the original game, is quite a amount of stuff. Quite a bit of stuff. Adding Golden Saucer Area alone is like its own game. Yeah, I mean, you're visiting more places, and I think that's probably the thing. FF7 Remake didn't have a lot of places. They had, like, locations and paths that led to locations, like Wall Market... Um, the Sector 7 slums, the Sector 5 slums, and the Shinra building, that's kind of it. That's like the, the highlight. But that was all they had to work with. Well, now they have Calm, they have Fort Condor, they have Medeal, they have Fort uh, Junon, they have Costa del Sol, they have Coral, all this stuff. Like, there's so many locations that I think this is probably more of a concern that they're addressing internally with their development team far more than the concerns that uh, fans are having. Because if you think about it, if you put all of this into like a 45 to 50 hour game, you can sufficiently do that, I think. When you get to play Rebirth, you might be led to believe that certain locations from the ga original game were cut. However, our policy during development is to avoid cutting. Oh, you know what that means? I think I know what that means. And this probably also makes sense why they're pushing Crisis Core so hard, specifically of all the compilation games. Because they're not really pushing before Crisis or Dirge of Cerberus. Just little little nods here and there, but they're absolutely pushing Crisis Core big time for a good reason. So you remember in um, Ever Crisis, it seems like the game is playing out based on the trailer in a chronological way. So there's stuff that's happening in Crisis Core, and if you mix all the events of Crisis Core and FF7 Original into one, the chronology is different because there's stuff that happens in the flashbacks of FF7 Original 
that happened before certain events in Crisis Core. So probably what's going to happen, I think, is that Ever Crisis is going to prepare us. Like Ever Crisis and Crisis Core are meant to prepare you, even if you're new to Final Fantasy VII, for Rebirth. So after playing Crisis Core and um, the Crisis Core Remaster and Ever Crisis, you will be now ready to experience FF7 Rebirth in the order. Because Rebirth is probably going to be the events as they are happening in Crisis Core and FF7 Original in some kind of chronological order. And that's how it's going to somehow look like you're visiting areas in different order, but it's still like in the same chronology as FF7 Original. That's actually quite smart because I always assume that the only way that newcomers can get into FF7 Rebirth without playing the original or without even playing Remake was that they have to go back to the original in order to get context. Well, no. What they're trying to do, I think, is to make Crisis Core the remaster and Ever Crisis be the somewhat of the prerequisite. Like, if you play Rebirth and... Like, it's a standalone game, but... There's certain things that don't make sense to you. Okay, you don't have to go 25 years back to play the original. You can actually, or even like three years back and play Remake, you can actually just go like one year back or half a year back and play Crisis Core Remaster and Ever Crisis and that's it. Like that's all you have to play in order to have the context needed to enhance the experience of Rebirth. That's my guess. The reason why they're going to do it out of order is that the story beats don't necessarily have to happen in those specific locations. And they're also going to be doing it somewhat in the chronology of FF7 as a whole, not necessarily FF7 original exclusively. So that's going to include Crisis Core. I don't think it's going to be open world in the way that Horizon is an open world. And now that I think about it, it makes a lot of sense. It wouldn't have made much sense for FF16 even to be more Horizon, that level of Horizon open world, because that's not really the experience. FF7 is really more like part of it is freedom and part of it is guided. So the guided portion is still important as far as like the storytelling. So what's a good compromise? Okay, it's open world, but it's like just semi open world with parts of it being like wide linear. Will 16 be more wide linear than FF7 Rebirth? I'm guessing Rebirth will be probably more wide. Like there's a balance, right? There's semi-open world and there's open linear. I think 16 might be more semi-open world than it is wide linear and vice versa for Rebirth because Rebirth is clearly wanting to be more of a cinematic experience just because it has the onus of that already from the original game. I guess they are using Ever Crisis and Crisis Core as crib notes. Yeah, essentially, I think that's where this is all kind of going. They want you to take Crisis Core, the remaster specifically, and Ever Crisis as the reference material for Rebirth. However, Rebirth will still be its own individual game. Like, you can just play it right off the bat without any, like, a lot of context. You can just kind of jump into the game as a new player. But if you want more context to enjoy the experience, to enhance the experience, then we're not going to force you to play a game that was made 25 years ago or even a game that was made three years ago. We're going to give you a game that was made one year ago, and that's good enough. You know, okay, okay, that makes sense. It sounds like Rebirth is going to be bigger world than 16, it seems. Uh, possibly, yeah, possibly. Um, at least in terms, well, we don't know yet, because we don't know how many lands there are going to be in 16 as far as, like, the, not just the big giant continent areas, but, like, there could be a lot of cities and towns and stuff that we don't know about. We're just saying that because FF7 right now, we have a sense of how big the world was outside of Midgar. And so if if FF7 Rebirth ends around, I think like the Northern Crater, like where the big Heart of Darkness moments happen, you know, um, where the world's been scattered. I mean, our party's been scattered. Uh, Tifa and Barret are about to be executed by Shinra. Cloud is lost. Everyone is facing some of their worst moments relating to Shinra. What that means is that we have to cover quite a bit of area. Right? We're basically covering the entire span of the world, including Wutai, because now that Yuffie's part of the party, uh, Nibelheim, like, all, there's so many big areas that we have to expand upon. I think Rebirth is going to be significantly better for, 
fans of the original seven than remake. The reason why is because Midgar in the original game was just five hours and there wasn't really much. All the side content, all the side quests weren't really all that consequential. So they just try to fill it up with a bunch of stuff. So FF7 Remake was like they didn't have enough content and they tried to expand it into a 45 hour game. Presumably, Rebirth will also try to be a 45 to 50 hour MSQ game, but it needs to cram the sum of everything after leaving Midgar up until the Northern Crater into the same 50 hour game. So that's like a lot of stuff but they're saying they're not gonna cut it. Therefore, what that means is that I think FF7 Rebirth is gonna be more the game that FF7 original fans wanted. It's gonna cover all the iconic locations and more that not cutting anything means that, okay, you're now reassured that everything that was so special to you in FF7 original is gonna be here. There's no need, there actually isn't even a need to include side content in FF7 Rebirth, if that's the case. Because the sheer amount of content that was in FF7 original from the time you left Midgar up until the Northern Crater, presumably, is enough to fill like a 50 hour game and more without any need for side content. Now, if they can give you side content that's like relevant and there's a whole bunch of mini games in the, the Golden Saucer and it's not just a relegated to a cinematic cutscene, then yeah, that's great. FF7 Rebirth won't feel like bloat is the main thing. It's not going to rely on side content in order to make the game more engaging. Like, oh, okay, you also had the upper plate area where Jesse's family lives, but that wasn't really much. I mean, you went up and then the it was cool to see uh, the upper plate of Midgar at night and a, a, a very typical kind of residential neighborhood. But that wasn't like, wow, that's like amazing. That's like a set piece, you know? Wall Market is a set piece. Uh, Sector 7 is a set piece. Sector 5 is a set piece in Eret's home. Well, the Golden Saucer, the Calm Flashback, all those are huge set pieces. And maybe that's it. FF7 Remake was working with limited set pieces just because of the original game because they decided FF7 Remake was going to end at the end of Midgar. But the Midgar portion didn't have a lot of set pieces. Well, everything after Midgar, the open world, up until the Northern Crater has a lot of set pieces. So you don't need to worry if um, they're saying that it's not going to be cut. All that stuff isn't going to be cut. What that means is that you, you can look forward now to a lot of really cool nostalgic set pieces. Mm -hmm.